As you have instructed and taught students over the years, yes. um, how have you urged them to go about writing about history? Are there things that you have been able to encourage and have you seen students kind of get the ideas that you've talked about? I would say no. I mostly taught undergraduates who were not going on to be historians. But uh, what I, as uh, uh, my professor friend said, and I don't remember this, that about a former student of mine, what she remembered, is I wanted them try to know more, try to be curious about human beings, about all kinds of human beings, living as well as past human beings, you know. Uh, writing about them then is a consequence. You see, in a way, historical writing, just like writing a novel, writing a short story, writing a history, an article, or a book, strictly speaking, doesn't have a method. No. Or, you know, there are footnotes, bibliographies. I taught in graduate schools as visiting professors. The method of history I could impart and teach in 25 minutes. But that's only a very small part of it. You see? What matters is the quality of your interest and the quality of your curiosity and your willingness to understand. About the ancient historians, Herodotus, Thucydides, Xenophon, and Plutarch in particular did. Did any of them have this gift of understanding human beings? Oh yes, they did. Oh yes, they did. And uh, of course they greatly differed, you know, but uh, again, they did not regard history as a special subject. Not even biography. The words didn't even exist. You see, uh, uh, the Greek word history originally means looking for something, research. You know, but there is an interesting difference, though. Uh, you know, when you think of Plutarch, and there are many others, they describe this emperor, this public figure, and so forth, but they don't describe how he came to be this way. You see, they don't, uh, there are very few, almost none, of the ancient historians who speak about the childhood and the education and the development of their figures. And this is interesting. This is relatively a new development. See. Yes? Who would you consider uh, extraordinary historians now that you would David McCullough or Robert Tuffman? Oh, there, there are some of them. There are, there, there, there are some very fine, great historians today. Uh, uh, not necessarily less than others. And, uh, uh, well, some of your names you would not know. I mean, uh, and some of them are not very well known. There is an English church historian, uh, Chadwick, who is absolutely not only first rate but uh, uh, a very high level of history and uh, there are others and uh, it often happens uh, that uh, this is part of the bureaucratization of profession well Chadwick is well known, Owen Chadwick is well known but uh, uh, for example I have a friend uh, who is whom I consider the greatest of the American historians of foreign relations he wrote more than 30 books, and except within the profession, he's not well known. But that happens, you know, there is, uh, uh, there is no absolute relationship between the 
in any field, whether it's music or painting or science of, uh, of a reputation and achievement. This will always be that way. What then happens is not that good writing and good, not that good novels and good history survive, but bad novels and bad history do not survive. You see, this is the only mark that we can have satisfaction. You know, there can be uh, bestsellers and so forth that 30, 50 years after appearance are shallow and unreadable. This is true about historians too. Yes? Um, did that idea of the history 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 of the epics and novels is that we can't relate to uh, the characters in epics because there are imaginary characters involved? Uh, yes, yes. The epic deals with mystical figures, uh, gods and goddesses and heroes. We cannot, I mean, it, 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 it's, it's very interesting to read about them, but they're not like other We cannot identify with themselves. They're not like us. We can't relate their struggles against gods, though, to our struggles against other problems that aren't necessarily gods. No. Problems, well, we can, we, we, uh, we can read about them. They can inspire us. But, uh, but I, I repeat this uh, verb. We cannot really identify ourselves with them. They're not like us. Okay. They're not supposed to have been like us. You see? Uh, professor, twice in your lecture you made reference to a desire for the real. Yes. The first was with reference to the rise of the novel rather than... Yes. And then the second was with reference to the, the popular histories of... The Appetite for history, yeah. yes, yes. Is there some connection of the last... Is there some sort of social reason in the last 250 years for the desire for the real? As if it's absent, the real is absent somewhere. And people want it back. Well, this changes in the 250 years, I told you. You know, I... Uh, but uh, I am relating it, and this is uh, speculation on my part, to the present appetite in history. Present appetite for history. You see, I have... Uh, um, I'll just have a friend uh, who is a very intelligent man, doesn't have a history degree and so forth, and he reads a lot of history because he says, this is really interesting, this is really telling. Yes, okay. I was interesting how these people, how this man was, how these people, how this thing really happened. And there is so much in today's world, pictorial and television, which is not sufficiently real. I mean, part of it is pictorial, you know, and the verbal things are not real. They are um, exaggerated, directed, skewed in a certain direction. And of course, there's also danger there. You know, a well-written history, which might not be very good, people will say, oh, well, that's uh, what really happened. And that's really not exactly what happened. But I don't know. Well, I emphasize this uh, appetite for real, and real is a uh, difficult word, you know. Uh, I, I, I emphasize this uh, 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 an appetite for the real, I said, this is something else than nostalgia. This is not, this is not an escape into the past. Uh, this is, seems to be an appetite for something else. Yes. It's not an appetite, though, for this dry German uh, professional historical product. It's yes. really history as literature in yes. some way that, that is, uh, it doesn't violate um, objective scientific principles, but it goes beyond it to become yes. and insights into the human condition. Yes. <sighs> yes, uh, definitely. I mean, after all, the history is necessarily narrative, is telling a story, you know. 
And of course, a story must be interesting, and you can make it interesting in all kinds of false ways. Uh, but it has to be also plausible and uh, give the impression of truth, you see. 